Welcome YouTubers to another episode in my Grammar Hero series. In today's video, I'm going to show you the solutions to the second practice test from my website. Um, in case you missed it, I recently created a website called MasterTheAsFab.com. Uh, there you can take three practice tests and in the next few months, I'm probably going to have at least 10 up there for you. Uh, that said, let's go ahead and get started with today's video. Question 1 says the sum of 5175, 17250, 39, 854, and 9 cents is. Um, so this is a fairly simple problem. Uh, it, as you can see, it requires us to add up uh, whole numbers and decimals. Uh, so let me go ahead and show you how to do that. Okay, as you uh, do this problem, the most important thing to do is to line up your decimals. And you'll see why in just a minute. Okay, um, to add decimals, you simply just take the decimal place and drop it down in place. And then you add these as if they were whole numbers. Uh, so we have 5 plus 4, which is 9 plus 9, that's 18. So we have to carry a 1. 5 plus 5 is 10. 7 plus 1 is 8. 10 plus 8 is 18. So we carry the 1. And at this point, we can see that our answer has to end in 88. If we take a look here, this is 64, so this can't be a correct answer choice. This is 78, so we know that can't be correct. This is 89, so that can't be correct. Um, if you wanted to, and you were confident that you uh, set this problem up correctly, you can stop and just select this answer choice. But that said, let's keep working it out. Um, 9 plus 1 is 10, 8 plus 2 is 10, plus 1 is 21, carry the 2, 5 plus 3 is 8, plus 2 is 10, plus 7 is 17, carry the 1, 1 plus 1 is 2, okay? Um, the reason I don't like to just stop right here and answer the question is, if I've made a mistake here and then I make a mistake here and my numbers are off, that will prompt me to go back and work this problem out again. So um, if you're in a rush, you can simply stop right there. But if you want to make sure that you're doing everything correctly, uh, you can always work out the problem completely. All right, let's move on to the next problem. All right, number two says, of the 48 students registered in a class, two-thirds are females. How many males are registered in the class? So if two-thirds are female, that means uh, one-third are male. Uh, since we know there are 48 students in total, to find out how many are male, we would do 48 times one-third. Um, to make any whole number a fraction, you can simply place it over 1. So to make 5 a fraction, I can put it as 5 over 1. To make 7 a fraction, I can put it as 7 over 1. To make 15 a fraction, I can put it as 15 over 1. And to make 48 a fraction, I can put it over 1. Um, now, we can simply just multiply straight across. 48 times 1 is 48. 1 times 3 is 3. So now you can see we have this fraction 48 over 3. Instead of regarding this as a fraction, we can actually regard this as long division, namely 48 divided by 3, which would look like this. 48 divided by 3. Let's go ahead and work this out. 3 goes into 4 one time without going over. Uh, 3 times 1 is 3. Uh, 4 minus 3 is 1. We drop down this 8. Uh, 3 goes in 18 6 times. 3 times 6 is 18. 
18 minus 18 is 0, so we know there's no remainder. And therefore, we know 48 divided by 3 is 16. And to answer the question, we know there are 16 boys in a class of 48. Okay. All right. Question 3 says, if a service station greased 372 vehicles in a 31-day period, the daily average of vehicles greased is most nearly... Okay, so to find the average, we're going to have to do 372 divided by 31. And as I just did, you can regard this as a fraction, or you can read it as long division, namely 372 divided by 31. So that's going to look like this. And uh, as an aside, I want to say that each of my practice tests uh, focuses on one topic in general. Uh, as you can tell, um, in this video, I'm kind of forcing you to do a lot of long division. Okay. Um, so uh, 31 goes into 3. It doesn't. 3 is too small. 31 goes into 37 one time without going over. Um, at this point, we can look at our answer choices and see this starts with 1, this starts with 1, this starts with 1, this starts with an 8, so we know this is incorrect. Uh, 31 times 1 is 31. Subtract. Uh, 7 minus 1 is 6. 3 minus 3 is 0. Got to drop down this 2. And then we should recognize that 31 goes into 62 two times. Uh, 31 times 2 is 62, so we can see there's no remainder. In other words, uh, in the 31-day period, uh, the service station greased an average of 12 vehicles per day. Okay. All right, number four, a swimming pool has a depth of six feet and is 25 feet long and 15 feet wide. What is the volume of the pool? So in this case, we're not told what the shape of the pool is, but we're told it's length, width, width and height. So we're gonna, we have to be able to decide or determine that the pool looks like this. That is, it's a rectangular prism that's a bad drawing, but uh, we have to know that the, the, the formula for volume for a rectangular prism is volume equals length times width times height. And as you can see, we're given all three of those things. We're told the depth or height is 6 feet. We're told the length, which is this right here, is 25 feet. And we're told it's 15 feet wide. Uh, now that we've identified the shape as well as the formula for volume, uh, we can go ahead and plug these things in. So again, length is 25, width is 15, height is 6. Um, I'm going to do this math right here since it's a little easy. 25 times 4 is 100, therefore uh, 25 times 6 is 150. We're still left with this 15 hanging out. So let's do this off to the side. 150 times 15. 0 times 5 is 0. 5 times 5 is 25. Carry the 2. 5 times 1 is 5 plus 2 is 7. Add a 0 since we're starting this number. 1 times 0 is 0. 1 times 5 is 5. 1 times 1 is 1. 0 plus 0 is 0. 5 plus 0 is 5. 7 plus 5 is 12. Carry the 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. So we can see the volume is going to be uh, 2,250 cubic feet. Again, uh, on my channel, I do have a video uh, devoted to discussing the formulas you need to know, the geometric formulas you need to know to do well on the ASVAB and this is uh, among those formulas.
So if you haven't had a chance to take a look at that video, go ahead. In the description of that video, there's also a uh, PDF document that has all the formulas for you. Okay. Number five, what is the circumference of a circle that has a radius of 140 feet? Use 3.14 for pi. Now, I don't remember if on the actual ASVAB, they're going to tell you to use 3.14 for pi. But since you're working out everything by hand, please use 3.14 for pi. Um, it's not going to change your answer drastically from what, from what uh, they're going to get. Um, but in this, nonetheless, we have a circle. We're told it has a radius of 140 feet. And we're asked to find their circumference. So in that um, video in which I discuss the geometric formulas you need to know, I also briefly discuss um, uh, circles, including the fact that you need to know two formulas for circles, namely area, which is uh, pi times r squared, and circumference, which is 2 pi r. Um, so in this case, we're being asked to find the circumference, and we're given everything we need to, to find it. So let's go ahead and plug things in accordingly. Uh, C, circumference equals 2. Pi, we're told to use 3.144. And we're told the radius is 140. Okay. Um, to make this math easier right now, I'm going to do 2 times 140. Uh, 2 times 140 is going to be 280. And we're still left with this 3.14 hanging out. So now, uh, to f find the circumference, we have to do 280 times 3.14. So that's going to look like this. Now, when you multiply uh, anything that has a decimal, you shift it to the right, in this case, one, two times, uh, to make that decimal a whole number. And then you add the decimals back in at the end. So in reality, I'm working out this problem, albeit with two decimals to add back in to the left at the end. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Be very careful as you work out uh, three-digit integers multiplied by three-digit integers. Um, it's very easy to make a mistake when you do multiplication like this. Uh, zero times four is zero. 8 times 4 is 32, carry the 3, 2 times 4 is 8, plus 3 is 8, 9, 10, 11. Uh, drop down to 0 since we're starting this 1. 0 times 1 is 0, 8 times 1 is 8, 2 times 1 is 2. Okay, let's uh, keep moving. Um, oops, sorry, I didn't mean to, I didn't mean to put that. Let me, let me start over since I made a mistake there. Sorry about that. I was trying to check my work to make sure I didn't make a mistake. Zero times four is zero. Eight times four is 32. Carry the three. Four times two is eight. Eight plus three is eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, since we're starting this one, we have to add a zero before we begin. 1 times 0 is 0, 8 times 1 is 8, 2 times 1 is 2. Now we have to add two zeros since we're starting this 3. 0 times 3 is uh, 0, 3 times 8 is 24, carry the 2. 2 times 3 is 6, plus 2 is 8, let's add. 0 plus 0 plus 0 is 0, 2 plus 0 plus 0 is 2. 8 plus 1 is 9, uh, 4 plus 2 is 6, plus 1 is 7, uh, and then 8 plus nothing is just 8. Add our two decimal places back in that we shifted right here, 1, 2, and we can see that the circumference is going to be 879.2, which is right there. Sorry about this mistake, I got a little distracted. All 
All right, number six. On a on the throw of a six-sided die, what is the probability that you will roll a number less than or equal to four? So uh, let's go ahead and draw the faces of a six-sided die. Again, there's one, two. three, four, five, and six. The odds of rolling this dice and getting any one of these six faces is one over six. In other words, the odds of throwing the dice and getting a 3 is 1 over 6. Okay. This question asks you uh, what is the probability that you'll roll a number less than or equal to 4. Well 4 is right here. <clears throat> so the odds of any of these numbers coming up is 1 6 plus 1 6 plus 1 6. And that looks like this. Now since all these denominators are the same, we can simply add the numerators. So that's going to look like this. 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1, which is going to be 4 over 6. If we reduce top and bottom by a common factor of 2, 4 divided by 2 is 2, 6 divided by 2 is 3. We can see that the odds of rolling a uh, 4 or less is 2 thirds which is the same <clears throat> as 66%. Um, now, you do have to be pretty comfortable converting between fractions and decimals, so you kind of need to know these. 1 over 4 is the same as 25. Uh, 1 over 3 is the same as 0.333. Repeat it. 1 over 2 is the same as uh, 0.5, 3 over 4 is the same as 0.75, 2 over 3 is the same as 0.666, repeat it. Um, you do need to know some of these common conversions, but that said, if you did not know that, you can always treat this fraction as long division, namely 2 divided by 3, which would look, look like this. 2 divided by 3, you would ask yourselves, <clears throat> how many times does 3 go into 2 without going over? It doesn't, so you have to add a 0 here. When you add that 0, you have to add a decimal there. Now the question is, how many times does 3 go into 20? 3 goes into 20 6 times without going over. 6 times 3, of course, is 18. 20 minus 18 is uh, 2. We have to drop down a zero. Uh, three goes into twenty six times without going over. Uh, three times six, of course, is eighteen. And as you can see, it repeats. So um, that's that problem. Okay. <clears throat> A dress that cost $175 is on sale with a 25% discount. What is the sale price of the dress? Uh, so uh, to do this one, we're going to do the cost of the dress minus the discount. And that's going to get us our sale price. Um, to calculate the discount, we have to do 175 times uh, points, 0.25, which is the amount of the discount. Now we're doing multiplication with uh, decimals, so I have to move this over two times. Uh, so in reality, I'm doing 175 times 25, albeit with two decimal places to add back in at the end. Uh, 5 times 5 is 25, carry the 2. 7 times 5 is uh, 35, plus 2 is 37, uh, carry the 3. 
5 times 1 is 5, plus 3 is 8. Um, add a 0 since we're starting this number. 2 times 5 is 10, carry the 1. Two times, or 7 times 2 is 14, plus 1 is 15, carry the 1. And uh, 2 times 1 is 2, plus 1 is 3. Uh, 5 plus 0 is 5. 7 plus 0 is 7. 8 plus 5 is 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Carry the 1. Uh, 3 plus 1 is 4. Add our two decimals back in. So we can see that the discount is going to be 43.75. So again, we're working with this formula here. Um, so we got to take this 43.75, which is, is the amount of the discount subtract it from the cost of the dress, the original cost, to find our sale price. So that's going to be 175 minus 43.75. Um, we can't do 0 minus 5. We can't do 0 minus 7. So I have to borrow a 1 here. This becomes 4. This becomes 10. Um, I can do 10 minus 7, but I still can't do 0 minus 5. So I have to borrow a 1 here and make this 10. 10 minus 5 is 5. 9 minus 7 is 2. Um, drop down our decimal in place. Uh, 4 minus 3 is 1. 7 minus uh, 4 is 3. 1 minus nothing is 1. So we can see our answer is 131.25, which is right there. Okay. Uh, number eight says if five hundred dollars is put into a savings account that earns six percent simple interest, how much money will be in the account after five years? Um, so if you ever see a problem that involves simple interest, uh, you should write down this formula right away. Interest equals principal times rate times time. That is I equals P R T. Uh, P is the amount you originally invest, R is the rate that you get on your investment, and time is how long you keep the money invested. Now in this case, we're asked to find out how much money will be in the account after five years. So we're going to have to add uh, the interest, which we're going to calculate with this formula, back to the principal to find the total amount of money in the account. So let's work on this first, and then we'll do this last part at the end. Um, so again, uh, I equals PRT. We're told that we invested $500 at 6%, which looks like this, 0 0.06 for five years. Okay. Let me go down a little farther. Um, I'm going to do 500 times 5 to make the math a little bit easier. Um, so let's go ahead and work that out. Uh, you should be able to do that mentally. 5 times 5 is 25. Therefore, 5 times 500 is 2,500. We're still left with this 0 .06 hanging out. Um, so now let's go ahead and work this out. Again, this is uh, 2,500 times 0 0.06. Um, we're going to move this decimal place over two times and add that back in at the end. In reality, we're doing 2,500 times 6 with two decimals to add back in at the end. 0 times 6 is 0. 0 times 6 is 0. 5 times 6 is 30. Carry the 3. Uh, 6 times 2 is 12, plus 3 is 15. Add our two decimals back in, 1, 2. So we can see that after 5 years, uh, the account has accrued $150 in interest. Uh, that said, we did put our, an original investment of $500 in that account. So again, we have I calculated. Now we have to add that, that back to the original principal. So it's going to be 500, which is the original, original principal, plus
plus 150. Um, 0 plus 0 is 0. 0 plus 5 is 5. 5 plus 1 is 6. So now we know uh, over 5 years with all these uh, metrics the account would have $650 in it. That is it would have the $500 you put in it originally plus the $150 in interest that you earned on that money. Okay. Number nine, a field measures 40 yards by 30 yards. If a person wanted to walk diagonally from one corner of the field to the other corner, how far would she walk? So we got a rectangular field. Looks something like that. We're told it's 30 yards wide by 40 yards long. And we're asked to find this distance. Uh, that is the distance of a person walk diagonally from end to end. Um, you should recognize that when you cut this rectangle in half like that, you actually create two right triangles and in light of that you can actually use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out this distance here. Uh, in case you forgot the Pythagorean theorem is this. a squared plus b squared equals c squared where a and b refer to the legs of the triangle and c refers to the hypotenuse of the triangle. The hypotenuse is always directly across from the right angle in the triangle. So uh, in this case, let's go ahead and plug things in accordingly. Uh, we can see 30 and 40 are the legs. So this is going to be 30 squared plus 40 squared equals C squared. Again, C is the same as X. I can actually write a C there if I wanted to. Um, now, some of you may be intimidated by this math at this point. Um, if you really wanted to, you can kick off these zeros and make this 3 squared plus 4 squared equals C squared. Um, and at the end, add the zero back in. But in light of the fact that this math isn't going to be too bad, I'm just going to keep working it out with the larger numbers. Uh, 30 squared is 900. 40 squared is 1600 equals c squared. Let's go ahead and add these two together. Nine, 900 plus 1600 is 2500 equals c squared. Uh, to solve for c we're going to now take the square root of both sides. This crosses out. We're left with c equals the square root of 2500 which is equal to 50. Now, um, to do it this way, let's go ahead and work that out. Again, 3 squared is 9 plus 4 squared is 16 equals C squared. Um, 9 plus 16 is 25 equals C squared. Um, take the square root of both sides. C equals the square root of 25. C equals 5. Since we took a 0 away here, we have to add it back in here. And you can see that no matter how we use a shortcut to solve this problem, the answer still comes back, comes, comes out the same way. Okay. All right, number 10. Half of an inch on a map represents 100 miles. On the same map, a distance of 325 miles is represented by. So this is a proportion problem. Uh, namely, we're told a half an inch represents 100 miles. And given that proportion, we're asked to find out how much is represented when uh, how much 325 miles is represented by on the map. So this is <coughs> this is our proportion right here. One half over 100 equals x over 325. Um, on the top you can see there are inches. On the bottom you can see there are miles. 
So uh, to solve proportions, we would just cross multiply. That is, we would do 100 times x, which is 100x, equals uh, 325 times 1 half. Let's go ahead and work out 325 times 1 half. And to make it easier, I'm just going to convert 1 half to 0.5, move it the decimal place once, and add it back in at the end. Uh, 5 times 5 is 25, carry the 2. Uh, 5 times 2 is 10, plus 2 is 12, carry the 1. 5 times 3 is 15, plus 1 is 16, add our one decimal place back in. So we can see that we're left with 100x equals 162.5. Let's go ahead and solve for x by dividing both sides by 100. Okay, this leaves us with just x equals 162.5 divided by 100. And whenever something's divided by uh, something uh, to the power of 10, either 10, 100, or 1,000, all it does is shift the decimal place according to how many zeros there are. In this case, there are two zeros, so I'm just going to shift this decimal place 1, 2, so we can see that 162.5 divided by 100 is just 1.625, which is our answer right there. Let me illustrate that again. If I had 162.5 divided by 10, <clears throat> I would just shift this uh, decimal to the left one time, and that would be 16.25. If I had 162.5 divided by 1,000, that would shift this decimal place to the left one, two, three times. And that would be 0.1625. Again, there are three zeros. So you shift it three times. One zero, shift it one time. Two zeros, shift it two times. Okay? Number 11, a rectangle is six times as long as it is wide. The perimeter of the rectangle is 140 inches. What is the length of the rectangle? Okay, so we have a rectangle, we're told, that has a side that is six times as long that it is wide, neither of which we know. Um, so in light of that, I'm going to represent the side as x, and we're told the, the its length is six times its width. So if this is x, this is 6 times as big, 6x. And uh, since perimeters are symmetrical, if this side is 6x, we know this side is 6x. If this side is x, we know this side is also x. And similarly, we're also told that the perimeter of the rectangle is 140 inches. Um, to find the perimeter of any shape, you simply add up all the lengths of the side. So in that case, that would look like this, x plus 6x plus x plus 6x. We're told what the perimeter is, so we can substitute that in. Okay, now all we have to do is solve for x. Um, let's go ahead and combine like terms. 6x plus 6x is 12x plus x is 13x plus x is 14x. We're left with 140 equals 14x. Divide both sides by 14. This crosses out. We're left with x equals 140 divided by 14, which we should be able to see is just going to be 10. Okay. Now 10 refers to x, which is the width of the rectangle. We're trying to find the length of the rectangle. So if x is 10, we know the length is going to be 10x. So that's going to be 6 times 10, which is going to be 60. OK, a couple more and we're done.
another similar problem uh, a triangle with a perimeter of 128 inches has one side that's twice as long as the shortest side a third side that's eight inches longer than the shortest side and a length what is the length of the shortest side so again uh, this problem makes reference to the shortest side of the triangle so and all the sides are unknown so in light of that I'm gonna represent the shortest side by X so if the short side is X and this side is twice as long as the shortest side that's gonna be 2x and if this side's 8 inches longer than the shortest side that's gonna be X plus 8 okay uh, similarly we're told that the perimeter of the triangle is 128 inches perimeter of course as I just explained in the last problem is adding up all the lengths of the sides so in that case that's going to be x plus 2x plus x plus 8 um, again the perimeter is 128 so that's going to be 128 equals x plus 2x plus x plus 8 uh, let's go ahead and combine like terms x plus 2x is 3x plus x is 4x plus 8 uh, subtract 8 from both sides we're left with um, 4x equals 120 again 128 minus 8 is 120 uh, divide both sides by 4 x equals 120 divided by 4 is going to be 30 okay and again x represents the shortest side of the triangle we're asked to find the length of the shortest side so we can see that's going to be 30 all right 13 a train a is heading north at 45 miles per hour <clears throat> Train B is also heading north on an adjacent track at 90 miles per hour. At the end of four hours, how much farther will train B have traveled than train A? So if it's helpful, you can make a little sketch. Um, this is going to be train A. Starts here, goes this way uh, at 45 miles per hour for four hours this is train B here again the train tracks and starting points are the same this one's going 90 miles per hour for four hours and the question is how much farther does uh, train B go than train A we should recognize that uh, we have all the elements of the distance formula uh, which is distance equals rate times time um, in this case we're gonna have to find the distance of train A and the distance train B travels and then subtract them so it's gonna look like this distance 1 is gonna refer to train A um, and that's gonna be R times T distance 2 is gonna refer to train B that's going to be R times T. <clears throat> to answer this question, we're going to have to do distance 2 minus distance 1. But as you can see, to find these two distances, we do have to plug things into the formulas accordingly. So let's go ahead and do that. Again, I'm going to do D1 here and D2 here. Um, and we're just using the distance formula for both of them distance our train A is going uh, 45 miles per hour for four hours and train B is going 90 miles per hour so the rates 90 for four hours um, 45 times 4 is 180 Again, 45 times 2 is 180. Double that. Uh, 45 times 2 is 90. Double that. That's 180. Um, 90 times 4 is 360. So we can see D2 is 360. D1 is 180. 
So D2 minus D1 is 360 minus 180, which is just 180 miles. Again, somewhat of a hard problem, but the way the, the math worked out, uh, you could do everything pretty much in your head once you set it up for yourself. All right, 14, um, Acme Corporation earned only $150,000 during the previous year, one-fourth of the management's predicted income. How much earning did the management predict? Um, so we're going to have to solve this one by converting this word problem to a simple algebraic formula. Um, we're told that 150000 equals one quarter or one fourth of some predicted value x and so now we can solve this problem uh, to get x by itself multiply both sides by four by multiplying one fourth x by four you get rid of the one fourth so you're left with x equals 150,000 uh, times four okay um, now again uh, in addition to testing your ability to do long division in this uh, practice test I also set up all the problems so that you can do most of them mentally now let's think about this problem right here we have 150,000 times four many of you would probably do this and work it out okay but think about it this way let's pretend these zeros weren't there 15 plus 15 is 30 plus 15 is 45 plus uh, 15 is 60 so we know 15 times 4 is 60 just add the zeros onto it at the end namely 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 and you're done so we know that 150,000 times 4 is 600,000. Another way to think of about it is like a clock. Uh, there are 15 minutes corresponds to a quarter of an hour. Therefore, you know 15 times 4 would be 60. And then just add the zeros on accordingly. Again, you have to get comfortable doing a lot of mental math. Um, that's going to speed you up significantly, so that's something you do have to work on if you, if you can't do it already. All right, 15. An employee's ratings on performance appraisals for the last three months were 95, 86, and 88. If the required yearly average to qualify for a promotion is 92, how much should the fourth quarter rating be? So in this case, we're working with averages, um, which is this. The average is equal to the sum of the numbers divided by how many numbers there are. Uh, in this case, we're told what the average must be. The average must be 92 to qualify for a promotion. So we know the average must be 92 in this case. We're given three of the four quarter ratings, one, two, three, uh, and there's going to be a fourth one. So that's going to look like this, 95 plus 86 plus 88. Um, we want to know what the fourth quarter rating m must be for the person to qualify for the promotion. And since that's unknown, we're going to represent that as X. Uh, and again, the only thing we're missing in the average formula is the number of numbers. Let's go ahead and count that up. One, two, three, four. It's going to be four numbers. Uh, now that we have this problem set up, we can go ahead and solve for x. First thing I'm going to do is multiply both sides by four uh, to get rid of the fraction. This simply crosses out. We're left with 92 times four equals 95 plus 86 plus 88 
plus x. Let's go ahead and work this out. Yes, you can do it mentally. I'll show you in a second. Uh, 2 times 4 is 8. Uh, 9 times 4 is 36. So we can see this is 368 equals 95 plus 86 plus 88 plus x. Um, to do this mentally, you can regard this in two different ways. You can do 90 times 4, which is 360, and then 4 times 2, which is 8, and then just add those together to get you 368. So you could have done that mentally. Again, we're still trying to solve for x. So the next thing I'm going to do is add these up. That is, I'm going to make these three one big number. Uh, 5 plus 6 is 11, plus 8 is 19, carry the 1, uh, eight plus, or 9 plus 1 is 10, 8 plus 8 is 16, 10 plus 16 is 26, okay, so again we're solving for x, so let's subtract 269 from both sides, this crosses out. We're left with x equals 368 minus 269. 368 minus 269. We can't do this one, so we have to borrow one there. That becomes uh, 5. That becomes 18. 18 minus 9 is 9. 5 minus 6 we can't do. We have to borrow 1. This becomes 2. This becomes 15. Uh, 15 minus 6, of course, is 9. 2 minus 2 is 0. So we can see that in order to qualify for the promotion, the employee would have to obtain a fourth quarter rating of 99. Okay? All right, last problem. This one's not easy. I put it in there on purpose. That way, uh, if you're getting close to get 100, you're going to have to work for this one. Um, 16 says, NASA decides that it's a fine day to launch a rocket. The rocket blasts off at 3.52 p.m. At 3.55 p.m., the rocket has reached point A, 35 miles above ground level. At 4.10, the rocket reaches point B, 232 miles above ground level. Assuming a constant rate of speed, how fast is the rocket traveling between point A and point B? So right off the bat, we should recognize that we're dealing with the distance formula. Um, but in light of the fact that there's a lot of different parts to this problem, let's go ahead and draw a sketch. And the rocket takes off from this point. Let's say it goes vertical. Um, and reaches this point. I'm going to call this point. If my pen will work with me today. Point A. Uh, we're told that it blasts off at 352 and it reaches point A at 355. And it goes a total distance of uh, 35 miles. Um, to go from 352 to 355, that's three minutes. So we have this first leg of the rocket's trip um, charted. Uh, it leaves at 352. At 355, it reaches point A. In other words, it traveled 35 miles in three minutes. Now we're told it goes over here to point B. Uh, and we're told that from point A uh, to point B, it's four, it reaches that point at 4.10 p.m. And that's a total distance of um, 232 miles above ground. Um, so to go from 3.55 to 4.10, that's 5 minutes plus 10 minutes, so that's 15 minutes. Okay, and let me write that over here so you can see it. 
okay and we're concerned with how far the rocket traveled between point A and point B um, so we know how long it takes it to go from point A to point B 15 minutes but that said we're told that from point A to point B it's 232 miles above ground um, we have to subtract that by 35 miles to find out the true distance between point A and point B so that's going to be 232 minus 35 can't do 2 minus 5 so we have to borrow 1 this becomes 2 this becomes uh, 12 uh, 5 goes into 12 minus 5 is 7 um, we can't do 2 minus 3 so we have to borrow 1 this becomes 12 12 minus 3 is 9 1 minus nothing is 1 so the true distance between point A and point B is actually 197 miles and again that's because this of this 35 miles right here okay so now we're ready to plug things into the distance formula again we know how far it is between point A and point B it's 197 miles we're told that I took 15 minutes to go from point A to point B and we want to find out what the rate is now as I mentioned in my distance equals rate times time video um, uh, time is measured in hours um, so you can have one hour two hour three hour four hours but you have if you have 15 minutes you have to convert that to a fraction namely 15 minutes is the same as 15 over 60 minutes which is an hour which is the same as one fourth so we actually have to represent the time in this case as one quarter of an hour now we can solve for r we're going to multiply both sides by four to get rid of the fraction this crosses out uh, 197 times four which is right here seven times four is 20 8 carry the 2 9 times 4 is 36 plus 2 is 38 carry the 3 4 times 1 is 4 plus 3 is 7 so we can see the rate is going to be 788 miles per hour which is right there okay um, so that's all I have for you in this video I know I didn't work out everything by hand and I, I did so purposefully you do have to get comfortable uh, to do well on this section of the ASFAB doing things uh, mentally when appropriate um, that said uh, if you found this video helpful uh, please consider subscribing to my channel as always feel free to leave some feedback in the comments section below uh, but on that note I'm gonna go ahead and cut you guys loose Konnichiwa.